one who uh, she's an editor she interrupted a live broadcast take a look Российский премьер подчеркнул, надо усилить сотрудничество в рамках союзного государства. А на совещании в правительстве обсуждали, как сохранить доход. Российский премьер подчеркнул, She went on, and you can see behind the anchor, who did not turn around. Not only did it say no war, but she was basically saying, they are lying to you. Well, she was whisked away by the police and now faces 15 years in prison. Uh, but she had, she had made a video for social media before this whole arrest and got out there the fact that she was saying that she was ashamed to tell lies for Russian TV, ashamed to turn Russians into zombies, and said, you know, they can't arrest right, all of us. Right. So she's trying to get them to act. Meantime, we are watching everything unfold, exactly. you know, unvarnished here truth involved. here in America, yeah. and it's really hard for a lot of people to deal with that stress. Right, I was telling you the other day before we come on air, we had seen a story and I was getting ready to cry before I had to pull it together to anchor this newscast. So. so how do you pull it together? That's why we've got Dr. Ruth this morning. Ruth White is a psychologist and expert on stress. Good morning. Good morning, Daria Reyna, social worker. A social worker, and this is a big uh, social issue. Exactly. People being yes, stressed out. Reyna was explaining right. how she felt delivering the news. How do you feel watching it? Well, I try not to, like I take my own advice and what Raina was experiencing is what we call vicarious trauma, which is when you're watching other people suffer or you're watching other people in fear or you're watching something like war. It's not that it feels the same as if you're there because obviously that's more traumatic, but if you do start to feel some of the same feelings of anxiety, your heart will start to race. As Raina talked about, you start to feel sad. You might feel like crying. A lot of people might not um, be able to sleep so yeah it's it's something that I don't do I tend to read the news or listen yeah. to the news well, and what happens with that is that yeah. our visual is a lot more visceral it, we respond to it more viscerally than right. if we hear something or read something well that's why as we're talking to you I'm gonna tell them to roll the video I mean this is stuff that we are bombarded with right. every day um, we have mm -hmm. pictures of you know bombed out apartment buildings these are places people live this is what we're seeing kids and uh, we're seeing hospitals this is the maternity war and and so how to separate that or do you want to separate that because you said oh well I read about it so I don't have to look right. at you know the incubators there with the babies but it's happening so do you want to do you know do you just want to say oh well that's over there I won't worry about it no, I think the thing is to decide how much you want to take in because, you know, there's a 24 hour news cycle and if we were to watch it all day, we wouldn't be able to function. And there's a, the American Psychological Association ran a survey um, between March 1st and 3rd and they found that um, significant sources of stress for people right now, over 80% was global uncertainty, 80% was potential retaliation from Russia, another 80% were worried about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. and. All also, people are beginning to feel really overwhelmed. We're at the end of two, we're celebrated, just celebrated two years of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So people's emotional resources are already exhausted. And we just, it just, there's always something happening and there just doesn't seem to be a break. And so we really have to decide how much news we want to take in. And for me, it's, I check in a couple times a day. So usually in the morning and in the evening, and then I'm good. I, I get my yeah. emails from New York Times or the Washington Post, I watched Listen to Cron 4, but that's about it because yeah. again, you do need to take a break. Also, we have, the body has and the brain has a negativity bias. What that means mm. is that we hold on to negative things more than positive things. That's just the way we're hardwired as humans. And so we have to take effort to counteract that negative with something. You know, Daria, we've always had our running joke about puppy videos, right? So yeah. you, right. you have to find something, you know, I don't know, Emily in Paris or something light that right. makes you laugh or smile you know, stand-up comedy, something like that. Well, we when we do have puppies in the show for you today, we by the way, later on. Uh, Dr. Ruth. But, okay, so back to, like, what what that feels like to feel, um, I think it's the hopelessness or, or the, yes. what, like, we can't the help. Helplessness. Right. Yeah, so, like, I can't do enough. Like, right. I, I'm going to show you this horrible, you know, there's a reporter, an American reporter, uh, who was killed there. And then before we mm -hmm. came to you, we showed you a Russian uh, uh, worker for a TV station who mm. stepped out and did something. And I see these people, and here's, here's the reporter who died trying to get the news out. And I see them doing things, and 
I feel like, oh, what can I do, right? right. So what about that? Will that help us make us feel better? Is there something that we can do? Yes. So, you know, again, it's the helplessness, the ambiguity, like we just don't know what's going to happen, right? So again, apart from li limiting exposure, talk with a friend or loved one, or if you need to a mental health professional to just have somewhere to put it. Um, also, again, counteract with the positive uh, mindfulness. You know, I love mindfulness. Anything that gets you calm and centered, whether that's yoga, meditation, you like to crochet, creative hobbies, be active for the endorphins, you know, they make you feel good. So go outside, get sunshine on your face. Vitamin D actually um, improves mood. And then you can also take action. Maybe you want to volunteer to help refugees in your community. They might not be Ukrainian, but you might feel like you're doing something. Some people are signing petitions, other people are giving money or trying to support in some way, whether it's signing a petition or something. You can also journal your feelings. And also I love to practice gratitude. So when you start to feel negative, to, to find a positive thing to counteract that. And lastly, to take care of ourselves. Make sure that you're getting good sleep, you're eating well, and you're taking care of yourself. Can't help anybody yeah. else if you're not helping exactly. yourself. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Thank you for that, Dr. White. All right. Okay. We'll see you later. 855. We'll be right, right back. Great advice.